Hi, everyone. Professor Bergasser here. And I'm going to be starting our next video on specs reduction, which is reducing the short cross disperse mode. Now, up to this point, we've been mostly looking at the prism disperse mode, which is the lowest resolution form for specs. Uh, we also have other modes that we can use with the instrument. And one of those is known as the short cross dispersed or SXD mode. And this allows us to get higher resolution spectra. And it does this by doing essentially two dispersions. When we get the prism mode, it disperses the light this way. And then there's another uh, essentially grating in the uh, detector that then takes that light and spreads it out in the perpendicular direction. Uh, so uh, I will show you what that looks like in just a moment. Uh, but let me first by sure uh, breaking down what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna look at the difference between these different modes, the specs and prism, prism and SXD mode, uh, what the data actually looks like. And then we're gonna see how we use the same tools we use for the prism mode to do the calibrations, the extraction, combining the spectra, and then doing the Tellur correction. There'll be some modifications to the procedures because of the higher resolution mode. And we'll see how that comes in just a moment. And then there's one more step that we're gonna introduce, which is merging the separate orders to make one continuous one-dimensional spectra. Now, just to kind of frame this, let's take a look at what those spectra actually look like. And I'll log into my machine here. Uh, okay, and um, I'm going to bring up this uh, DS9 window. DS9 is just a nice window for looking at FITS images. And what I'm showing here is one of the raw data frames for one of the calibration stars for the SXD mode. Um, and just to kind of put this in perspective, if we go back to the, um, uh, the regular PRISM mode, Remember that what we're looking at is kind of just one straight line. This is, of course, the light being dispersed in the horizontal direction here. And so you get this one order of spectrum that covers uh, roughly the 0.8 to 2.5 micron range. For the uh, cross dispersed mode, again, this has now been spread out in a, in a vertical way. And so you end up with multiple orders of spectra, which still span between about 0.8 to 2.5 microns, but now they're spread out even at higher resolution. And so you get essentially more spectra for your money, for your detector, um, and it's a higher resolution. The only cost is that it's now coming into these multiple orders. So we're gonna have to do a little bit more work in terms of the reduction, but we'll find that the steps are actually quite similar. Okay, so to go through this, we're gonna follow the same procedures we usually do. We're going to CD into our reduction folder, and I'm gonna go and look at the same data set we've been looking at, which is 2305 to one. And uh, there was actually, uh, we didn't notice it, but in this data set, there was actually some short XD or SXD uh, data contained in there. Uh, and so these are the data we're gonna reduce. And we can see, for example, that we've got a source here named 1231 plus 0847. That's definitely a science source because we have about 300 seconds per exposure, pretty long exposures. And uh, then we have a star that starts with an HD. So it's usually a bright uh, Henry Draper star. Uh, that's 60 seconds, so that's likely to be our calibrator star. And then we have our flat fields and arcs. Notice that we actually have more flats and arcs than we did for the prism mode. Uh, that's just to boost up the signal noise for those calibrations. So we have the same units of data as we had for the prism mode. We're just going to be combining them in slightly different ways. Okay, so let's get into that folder. And I'm going to start my IDL. So type bash first and then IDL and then bring up the XFX tool routine. And we'll set the raw path, and I already have, to the 2305-21 folder, and then my CALS and PROC folders there. And I'm gonna to go to my CALS and reduce my calibration frames. And again, if we look at my log sheet here, uh, these ran from 66 to 73. So I'm gonna put those numbers in here. And then like before, just run make calibration frames. And you can see the flat field takes up a lot more of the image and so do the arcs, but it's chill pretty quick and we get a, a nice uh, pixel response function there. Now we'll go right to the point source uh, and, because that's the source we're looking at. I have to fill in the uh, prefix, which is just SPC, put that in. And we're gonna start by first reducing the calibration star since it's a little bit brighter. So those are files 60 through 65. So I'm going to start with the pair 60 to 61. I'm going to put in the flat field, which I've just reduced. And again, that was files 66 through 70 for that one. And the wave cal was 71 through 73. So let me load that image up. And you will see now with that pairwise subtraction, 
uh, these pairs of lines going all the way across the image. And again, it's because of the multiple order dispersion that happens for this mode. Uh, so we'll go ahead and make the spatial profiles. And you'll see now, instead of getting just one sort of positive and negative trace, we're actually getting now a series of them across the different orders. And those orders range from an eight to three. Now, it seems weird that you would start from eight to three, um, but those orders come from essentially how far uh, away from the sort of zeroth order dispersion uh, these are, are happening. This is part of the gradient equation. Um, and these orders three through eight provide the range that get us into the near infrared. We use one of the other modes like the LXD, the long wavelength cross dispersed, we'd have different ordered modes here. But these are what we usually get for these short crosses first. In any case, each of these orders, you see this nice positive and negative trace uh, for all the orders very nicely bright. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do an automatic guess for those positions and it finds it very well. Um, I'm going to trace all those objects, which it does almost immediately. And then I'm going to do a show apertures. And again, it's a very similar plot, but now we're seeing the same trace for each of these orders and they all look pretty good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and extract the spectra. And this takes a little bit more time because it's extracting across the entire detector over multiple orders, but ultimately you get these beautiful looking spectra and notice they span different wavelength ranges. So the first order, order eight here, goes from 0.82 to 0.9. And the last order, scroll down here, goes from 1.9 to 2.4, all right? All right, so uh, as before, we can go ahead and then run the rest of the pairs just as a do all steps because all my settings are fine. And I can just let that run and it'll take, a, you know, it takes about a minute or so. Um, and again, it, you know, this is uh, doing a lot of the work to kind of figure out how to where to find the source specifically, how to get rid of the background. All that's done very nice and automatically, just like the prism mode. We're just doing more orders in the reduction uh, than we do for the prism mode. All right, so we'll give this just a moment to finish up. And we're done, okay. So now let's turn to our science target. Uh, that starts on uh, file number 54. So we'll put in that first pair, 54 to 55, load that up. And now you'll see that we have a lot less light for the science target. In fact, I really only see kind of four orders here. There is a fifth order that maybe if you stretch your eyes, you can kind of see there, um, but these four orders seem to be the ones that are the most clear. Um, and so when we do the make profiles, it will trace out those profiles, but you'll notice that uh, when it comes up, those first two orders, order eight and order seven, order eight really doesn't have any light at all. There's no positive or negative trace there. Order seven has kind of a positive and negative trace, pretty close. Um, whereas if we go down, you can see the star gets a little bit brighter. This is pretty typical for our cool stars because they emit a lot less light at the shorter wavelengths than the longer wavelengths. So if I find those apertures, notice that um, it does a pretty, it definitely does pretty well for order six through three. Order seven is not too bad. Order eight, it just doesn't see anything there. So what we can do is we can just decide not to use that order. Uh, if we're not getting any signal, there's no point to extract the spectrum. And so we can just turn that off by unclicking at order eight. I'm gonna keep order seven for now because maybe it'll be useful. Um, maybe if we add up a few of these spectrum, we'll get some signal. The other thing change I'm gonna make for the science target is I'm gonna switch on this use app positions. What this does is it's using a uh, prefit idea of where the trace is going to be based on centering the lines from here. For the standard, we actually trace that out explicitly from the light from the star. Here, we don't really have enough light at the edges, so it might be a bad idea to actually trace it from that. So we're just gonna use the sort of preset uh, trace based on the flat field frames. Uh, we'll show the apertures. Oops, I have to actually trace the objects. We'll do that. Uh, we'll show the apertures. And, you know, if particularly we go down here, it looks like it's getting enough light. Like it might even be a little bit wide. So I might shrink that down to 0 0.9. And that's okay. So then I'm gonna go ahead and extract that spectrum. And now you'll see another plot showing the resulting spectra. And notice that we don't have an order eight here, but we start with order seven, six, five, four, and three. All right, so like before, now that we're happy with our settings, we'll go ahead and finish off 
the rest of these, which go from 56 to 59. And we'll do all steps and we'll give that a minute to finish up. Okay, so we finished all our extractions here. So what we can do is we can go ahead and quit out of XFX tool and now bring up our next program, which is XCOM spec, combining the spectra, just like we do for the prism mode. Uh, we, as usual, we'll set the path to our proc folder. And let's start with our science target. And just to remind myself, that was 54 through 59. So I'll put those files in, load that up. And now again, we see a slight difference. We see multiple orders being plotted out here uh, with multiple colors because of multiple spectra. And so, um, but it's still gonna follow the same steps. First thing we wanna do is scale the spectra. And this, in this case, what you wanna do is look at the order that has the most light or the highest signal to noise. So you can kind of get a good signal to, to uh, normalize the spectra. And I think uh, by my eye, that looks like it's gonna be order five, which appears to be the brightest, just a little bit brighter than order four. So here I'm gonna select in order, uh, order five to scale the spectra. And if I narrow my selection down to the middle peak here, that will actually scale all of this order. So you choose one order to scale everything else. And again, you want to choose that sort of brightest order to do that with. Now we got to do the prune the spectra. And because these exposures are longer, typically they're five minutes, um, they collect a lot more of those cosmic rays that end up producing these spurious signals. So you'll find for the SXD data, you have to do quite a lot more pruning than you would for the prism mode. So the demonstration, let's look at this first order three. So you can see there's quite a few pixels that are kind of all over the place. Um, one thing I would suggest doing is actually to uh, look a little bit far below and far above the spectrum to see if there's any real outliers. And so if I set the Y minimum here to minus two, uh, so let me click return on that. Indeed, you can see there's a few pixels here that are really hanging out underneath. So I'm gonna zoom in on those regions. And again, to mask, we choose the mask at the top here and we choose the spectrum we want to mask. So I'm going to start with this uh, blue spectrum four. We use the S key and then click left and right to select the line to get rid of it. Same thing with spectrum one. And we'll even grab spectrum two over here. All right. And um, if I remember, there was a couple over to the side here, kind of clip off. This is kind of like giving the specter a haircut to get rid of those stray hairs. All right, and so each case here, I'm selecting the S key and then clicking on either side. And now I can start working on some of the uh, bright pixels here. Now it can be very, you, can, you could end up spending a lot of time doing this if you really try to like make this perfect. Um, so I would suggest, you know, focusing on the things that are really outliers. So all of these up here seem to be pretty bad. So I'm gonna go select those and cut them out. But if you get to the point where you're just really trimming the noise, it's probably going a little bit too far. Um, you can't get rid of all the bad pixels. And to some degree, they're gonna average out anyways when you combine the spectra. So you don't have to make this perfect, but you should definitely get rid of the things that look like they're really uh, sticking out like a sore thumb. Maybe a couple more in here. So we'll select those. So, you know, I have to say, I like to do this with music because it is often a little bit tedious, particularly for these SXD spectra to get all these little lines, but it's definitely worth it because you'll find the spectrum is much cleaner after you do that. All right, so that's good enough for now. I'll go ahead and accept that. And that will give a much cleaner spectrum down there. And now I'm just gonna repeat this for the other orders. So I've done order three, I can now do order four and then order five and order six. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, but I'm gonna pause the video so that you have a, you don't have to just watch the pruning. Um, I'll clip those and then we'll be right back uh, uh, with the uh, rest of the uh, video. Okay, welcome back. So I've done all the pruning for all the orders, just finished up order seven there. And now that I've finished with that, um, normally for a bright spectrum, I would do the correct spectral shape, but because this signal noise is still relatively low, uh, I don't want to introduce any additional uh, you know, biases or systematics in here. So I'm going to leave that go. That really should be used for the brightest spectra. It works very well for the prism mode. 
it'll work very well for our calibration spectra. But for these, we kind of try to keep it alone. So the only thing left to do then is just to put in the uh, final uh, name here, uh, which is comspec54 through 59, write the file, and it will show the combined spectra. And you can see uh, that order seven still is pretty faint, uh, but we're getting pretty good signal for the other orders. And in fact, if I turn on signal to noise here, we're getting up to signal noise of 40 or so, uh, particularly for this order five. So that's pretty good. All right. So now I'm going to bring in the uh, other set of spectrum, which is our calibrator star. Load that up. You can see much cleaner, much brighter spectrum. Uh, in this case, the brightest order looks like it's probably order five there. Maybe order six. Let's, let's do order six. It's a little bit broader spectra. So I'm going to select order six, scale spectra. Matches it up very nicely. All right. And now it is the same process as going through and pruning the spectra of the uh, deviant pixels. Now, because these exposures were, are typically much shorter, uh, you'll find there's a lot fewer of these cosmic ray or bad pixels in there. In fact, I don't see anyone in, in this first order. Uh, if I go to order four here, looks pretty clean to me. Uh, if I go to order five, oh, there's one. So we can just pass that one off. A quick trim. Order six as well. If we want to be very picky, I could probably get rid of that one. That's okay. Uh, you can see, see these are getting really small. Uh, we'll go to order seven. Yep, there's one right there, which is one of our, it's our spectrum five. So we can mark that off. Again, that's using the S key and then left and right and clicking on the left and right side of it. And now all the way up to order eight, looks pretty clean. So we're pretty good there. And in this case, I will use the correct spectral shape to get things tightened up a little bit. And this will be com spec 60 through 65. Write that file, there we go. All right, so we finished com spec. Next step is the XTEL core, same function we used for the prism mode. We're gonna put in our standard spectrum, which was 60 to 65, and our object spectrum, which was 54 to 59. And I need to get the B and V magnitudes. And the same way I've done before, I'm going to go to my logs, uh, take the coordinates here, go to Sinbad. And I cheated. I looked it up already. So I'll put them in back in there uh, and press return. And uh, this is a good time to check to make sure it is actually a G2, sorry, A0V star. And it is, spectral type is A0V down here. Excuse me. And then um, the magnitudes B and V are here, 8.86 for both of them. So I'm going to put those numbers in here. And again, the code uses those magnitudes to correct the model for the A0V star it's using. We'll load that up. Now, before, when we did this, we selected the IP. Uh, to do the uh, uh, convolution kernel or the line shape profile. In this case, we're going to go ahead and use the spectrum itself because it's high enough resolution that we can measure the line profile from the data. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure it from the hydrogen lines, and we're going to use the hydrogen lines that are present in order six. So you select order six here, click on construct kernel. So this is our order six spectrum, and these features you see here are the hydrogen absorption lines in the spectrum of the source. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to first fit out the continuum, the sort of curve shape. We're going to fit that out, and I'm going to do that by uh, selecting the regions to normalize out. And for that, we use the N key for normalize, and then I'm going to click on regions around this line. So that's pretty good. That is basically telling the computer this is the region to sample to measure the continuum. And we're going to do that using the polynomial. And I'm going to change the fit degree here to something like 5. It works pretty good. And so if I fit continuum, you notice that this green line matches pretty well. It doesn't do so well out here, but I actually don't care out there because I'm not using that part of the spectrum. As long as it has a pretty good fit to this part, I'm going to be happy. Um, and so that looks good. So I'm going to click on the normalized. And now you see that it's flattened out this part of the spectrum, which is exactly what I want. And I'm going to zoom in using my Z key and clicking on this line. And now I'm going to use the S key to select the region around the hydrogen line. All right. So I just give it kind of a healthy uh, band around this dip here. And then just click on construct kernel. 
And then it produces this uh, funny plot here, which compares the uh, A0 star that we've observed, the original Vega model, which you can see is a little bit sharper of a line, and then what it is corrected that to, to match the data, all right? And then the blue line is residuals and they look pretty flat. So it looks like it's a really good fit. So I think we're pretty good. In fact, the numbers down here say that the max deviation is about one or 2%. That's great, all right? So we'll, we're happy with that. So we'll accept that. Next step is the scale of the lines like we have done in the prism mode. And in this case, you'll notice that I don't have to do this setting the, the radial velocity of the velocity shift because it's actually done that already using that deconvolution, right? It's used the position of that line to also figure out the velocity shift. So all I need to do is really just shape the lines. And so I'll zoom in on this first bracket gamma line here at K-band. I can use my E key and clicking on left and right gives me a kind of a good estimate. And then maybe I'll bring that up just a little bit more to make it as flat as possible. It's good. Uh, don't worry about this little curve here. It's not affecting the scaling for this other point, so we're okay. Let's go down to the next order, which is in the H band, and we've got lots of lines there. So I'm going to zoom into this region, and um, you know I can very easily use the E key for these guys because they're nice and isolated. Maybe this one as well, and then I'll just manually sort of adjust these ones that are near the Tiller band so they kind of fit pretty closely. I'm pretty happy with that, I think. That doesn't look like it needs very much. Uh, the order order five, um, even though there's this nice strong passion beta line, that usually fits pretty well, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, nothing really to fit here on order six. This is actually the order that we fit the hydrogen line with, so that was, that was already done. And now order seven here at the short wavelengths, we do see some residuals here. So I'm going to zoom up on these guys. And um, in this case, it looks like they're under corrected the lines, so I'm going to have to shrink them down just like the H band. A little confusion here because there's some telluric absorption as well. Looks like that one. Very much. Okay, so we'll just we'll just kind of you know adjust these to make this as flat as possible. Again, doesn't have to be perfect, but you just want to make it as kind of smooth as possible across this region as you can. And I'm pretty happy with that. Zoom out. That's good. Accept that. And that's the last order. So I'm going to go ahead and correct the telluric spectra, or sorry, construct the telluric spectra. And now I need to get these shifts to make sure that those corrections are aligned in wavelength space with our observed source. And I have to do this order by order. So I'm going to start with order three. And again, the goal is to use the regions that have strong absorption uh, to uh, correct this. So I'll, for example, use this region here, where you see this very strong kind of up and down. So as they come out of phase, they should make a big effect. So you can see that the correction is improving there to some point, and I can maybe run it again. That looks to be a good conversion there. So we'll accept that. We'll go to the next order. Now I should say for these, and you can tell this is going to be a very late type uh, round dwarf. In some cases, because these uh, telluric absorption bands are water bands and our sources have water absorption in their atmospheres, sometimes it's really hard to get the corrections to work out very right. And so um, we're going to, in some cases, we'll try to do this and if we don't see a, a significant change in the spectrum, you don't have to really worry about it. So um, again, I'll try to take this region here, but my guess is that we're not gonna see very much change in the spectrum here. So we should be perfectly fine with that. Same thing with order five. Order five has this nice sharp line here uh, that we don't see in the prism mode, but we can see it in the SXT. And we could use that to find the optimal shift for there. Okay. Uh, order six here. Um, well, there's a sharp feature here, but it's kind of in the noise. So I'll try to select that, but my suspicion is it's not gonna really give me a big change. You know, I don't really see much there. So we're going to go ahead and just accept that. And if I look at order seven, well, in that case, we don't really have any signal. <laughs> so um, we're not even going to bother. We're just going to accept it as it is. All right. So that's it. So now we're just going to put our file name in. And here in this case, we're using the specs dash SXD mode to set aside the fact that this is the short process first mode. Then the name of the source, 1231 plus 0847, and then underscore the date, 2003, 0521. 
We'll make sure to save both Toric and the model, and we'll write the file. All right. And so this has written a file that contains actually um, one, two, three, four, five different spectra of these different wavelength regions. Um, so this is what we call a multi-spectrum uh, format. Uh, and that is the fully calibrated, but still kind of in pieces version of the spectrum. So this brings us to our very last step, which is something we didn't have to do for prism mode because it was just one order. Now we have multiple orders. If we wanna make this into one continuous spectrum, we need to use a program called X merge orders. Okay, so I'm gonna type that in. I'm gonna load up the spectrum I just created, which is down here, SXD, uh, this one right there. And um, we'll load that in and we'll choose an anchor flux and we'll usually just start with the first order that's there. And then we're gonna be adding new orders to that anchor flux as we move along. So I'll add in the next order over. Now, in this case, notice that there's no overlap whatsoever between these orders, right? This one stops before this one starts up. And so there's actually not much you can do between these two orders. If I wanted to, I could trim some of this noisy spectrum away, but you know, it's, it's, you know, we can mask it on later on. It's actually no big deal um, if you wanna leave it in for now. So for this first pair, we're not gonna do anything. We're just gonna say merge the orders together. The next pair, however, as we bring in order five, there is some overlap in here. And we can see this if we zoom in a little bit to this region. Um, if we focus down here on the signal to noise plot, you can see that the blue spectrum and the green spectrum do overlap in this 1.4 to 1.45 micron range. So the goal here is to essentially, uh, you know, the way I sort of do this is to make sure that you get rid of as much of the noisy spectra that overlap and leave enough so that they kind of uh, connect up. Um, and so in this case, you can see at the signal noise plot, the blue line has a higher signal to noise than the green line here. And that's pretty obvious from the spectrum because if I turn off the green spectrum, you can see that the blue spectrum underneath is actually much less noisy. So what I'd like to do is get rid of this green part of the spectrum. And so there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can manually select, you're gonna take the green and trim to the right. And if I click on the image here, everything to the right in the green spectrum has now been removed. Um, now I don't wanna to go too much further than that because I run out of blue spectrum here. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna merge those orders. Let's bring in the next one and I'll show you another way of doing this. So let's zoom in on this overlap region. And again, we have the same case where the blue spectrum has a higher signal to noise over most of this overlap region than the green spectrum. And that's true from the noisiness. If I turn off green, you can see all the way down to here, basically it's uh, mostly better for the blue. And so I can also select the region by typing G and R, oops, G and R, that's green and right. And if I click there, it does exactly the same thing. It trims off the green to the right of that click. Um, and I think we'll leave the rest of that as overlap. Okay, so we'll merge those orders. Next order in, so let's zoom in on this region. All right, again, green is noisier than blue up to here, but notice at some point then the blue gets become a bit noisier than the red. In fact, if we turn off the green, you can see that this part of the blue spectrum is actually quite noisy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two trims. I'm first gonna trim off the green right from here, leaving the nice blue spectrum. And maybe I can even trim a little bit more. And then I'm going to do a trim of the blue spectrum from here. So I'm gonna do B for blue and L for left. And notice that these have changed over here. So that's convenient. And if I click, I've now gotten rid of the blue spectrum over here. So I've left a little overlap, but now I've got the cleanest parts of these two spectra. So I'll merge those orders and that's it. I've merged everything together. And so now I can uh, save this file off and we can do this by copying the input name from up here. And then I'm gonna add just one little word in here, Oops, one little word in there, uh, dash merged. So I know that this is the merged 1D spectrum for the SXD mode, and I'll write that off. Okay, so we'll quit that, done with that. And we can just inspect that spectrum again by using our xvspec function. I'll load up the file that we just saved, this 
merged file. And you see, we get something that's very much like the prism, but it's now at much higher resolution. And I can even start to zoom in and see some individual features in here. If I zoom into the J band, for example, these lines right here correspond to potassium absorption features. So we're starting to see some details in there. And even in this, uh, this wing here, all of this structure is coming from methane absorption features. Um, so we get a lot more information from the SX data, SXD data, uh, even though it's a little bit more time consuming to reduce. Okay, so that's it for that video. So uh, again, uh, there's lots of SXD data to reduce. And so uh, good luck with that. And just keep in mind that the steps are basically the same as the prism mode, but just a little bit more time consuming because you have to work with these different orders. And in some cases, trim a little bit more of the, the bad data that comes from integrating longer. Uh, and I hope you enjoy that. Uh, we'll have some more videos coming up with some other modes for specs reduction. Uh, and otherwise, good luck with your work, and we'll see you next time.